to university polynomials. I have learned about polynomials recently and I'm having a hard time understanding this topic. Okay, let's have a look. Right here we have x to the fourth power over x squared minus 4. The goal is to perform what we call the partial fraction decomposition. That means, you see we have one, what we call the algebraic fraction. We are going to break it down into the sum of smaller fractions. And let me show you how to do that. First thing first, check the degree on the top and the degree on the bottom. The degree on the top is the highest power, which is just 4. And the degree on the bottom is this power, which is 2. Now, keep this in mind. If the degree on the top is greater than or equal to the degree on the bottom, then we will have to do polynomial long division first to break it down. So, 4 is greater than 2, polynomial long division first. Right here, we are going to do the following. We have x to the fourth power, and then put a button on the outside. This is x squared minus 4. And then we are going to divide. Here's the deal. On the inside, we just have x to the fourth power, right? What happened to the other powers? Well, we are going to put them down as well. Plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x and the last d plus 0. You don't have to care about the higher power, but the lower powers, make sure you just write them down and they are always 0, of course. So this is still x to the fourth power. The reason that we do this is so that we can line up things better. Have a look. To do polynomial long division, you compare the thing inside and then the first term on the outside. So x to the fourth power and x squared. You can do the following. Just do x to the fourth divided by x squared. Again, the first term on the inside and then the first term on the outside, just like that. Work that out, we get, okay, just x squared. Right? x to the fourth over x squared, subtract the exponent. So this is what we need. Now x squared, you line up with the x squared term, which is right here. Put that down. Then we take this, times that, x squared times x squared, we get x to the fourth power. Let me just erase this. And then, don't forget to take this times that. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. Huh? Line them up here. It's important to line them up. Okay, we're done with that. Now for polynomial long diffusion, we subtract. Put parentheses like this with a negative on the outside, and then we subtract. This minus that is 0. This minus nothing is just nothing, don't worry. But 0 minus negative 4 is positive 4. And then maintain the x squared term. Okay. Now we are going to do the same thing. We have this term on the inside. Compare this with the first term on the outside. And you can just divide on the side like this. 4x squared over x squared. Reduce out the x, we get 4. And this is what we need. It's just a constant, so you put down right here with the constant term. We need a plus 4. 4 times this is 4x squared. Technically, I should also bring down the 0 because we need to you know, line them up. And then 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Now, subtract parentheses like this. This minus that, 0. Now, 0 minus negative 16, we get positive 16. So this is how we do polynomial long division. If you need to see more examples like this, you can check out my other video for it. Not done yet, though. OK, so how do we like get information from here for that? Let me show you. Once we have this, this right here is a quotient that tells us this right here is equal to x squared plus 4. And these right here are done in the sense of the partial fraction part. However, we do have a remainder 16. So we will have to add this remainder, that's a positive, that's why we add, 16 over the original denominator, which is x squared minus 4. So as you can see, so far we have broken down this into 1, 2, 3, 3 terms, right? But this is not done yet, because this right here, we can keep on going. Because notice the x squared minus 4 can be factored 
into x minus 2 times x minus 2. And this is really the part that people say the partial fraction decomposition. So let's continue. Here we go. I'm going to abbreviate PFD, not PDF, but PFD for partial fraction decomposition. And this is meant to be for this part only, a number over, here is the first case, just like you mentioned in the comment, we have two distinct linear factors. So we can just write it down, x minus 2 times x plus 2. For this, it's extremely important to know the setup first. You break this down into two smaller fractions. The first one with this denominator and the second one with that denominator. Here, because we have x to the first power, so that means the top is just going to be a constant. So we call that a. Likewise here, it's also just x to the first power, the top we call that b. When you set this up, the top is one degree less than the bottom. And there are different cases, you can check them out the video where I go into more detail with like the quadratic case, or the irreducible case, or the repeating case. So make sure you watch that. But once you set this up, the rest is just algebra. How though? Here, we have an equation with fractions. That's not what we like. We can clean this up by multiplying everybody by the lowest common denominator. Like this. Take this times that, the denominator and that cancel. We have 16. Take this times this, x minus 2 cancel. We have a times, we still have this factor, x plus 2. Continue, take this times that, the x plus 2 cancel, but we have this times that, so plus b times x minus 2. Now just do the usual business, distribute the a, so ax plus 2a, distribute the b, bx minus 2b. Now on the right hand side, combine like terms. Both of these have an x. I'm going to just put the x on the outside and then factor out the x right here, like, right? and then we have the a plus b. So this is the constant for the x on the right hand side. And then on the right hand side, we still have the plus 2a minus 2b. They don't have x, so just keep it. You don't have to factor out the 2. Okay, what do we do though? Now, on the left hand side, we only have 16, right? So technically, that's like 0x plus 16. And the reason I put that down is to show you, on the left hand side, we have no x, right? 0x. That means, on the right hand side, this has to be 0. Whatever you have on the left, you must have the same thing on the right in order to make this an identity. So this tells us that a plus b it's equal to zero. Another condition is that this is just a constant that doesn't have the x. Likewise, these two, they don't have the x either. So together, they must be equal 16. So 2a minus 2b, it's equal to 16. And we get a system of equations. Now, it depends on how you want to solve it. You can divide everybody by 2 for the second equation and then add the equations up. Or you can just do substitution, perhaps subtract a to both sides. So b equals negative a, and then put negative a into here. So we get 2a minus 2 times the b is now negative a, which is 16. This is 2a plus 2a because negative negative is 16. So that means 4a is equal to 16. Divide both sides by 4. a is equal to 4. Okay. And then because b is equal to negative a, that tells us b is equal to negative 4. Yeah, negative 4. a is 4. Now, once we have the a value and also the b value, we can just go ahead and put that into here and here. So this is the final answer. So let me write this down. x to the fourth over x squared minus 
4. This is equal to, first we have these two terms, x squared plus 4. And then for this part right here, which is the blue part, we are just going to add a over x minus 2, and a is equal to 4. So that's 4 over x minus 2. And then we add b is negative 4 over x plus 2, just like that. Now, of course, plus a negative, we can multiply the negative and positive right here. So we can put a negative right here instead. And this is the partial fraction decomposition for that right here. I am assuming you are doing this for pre-calculus. And let me tell you, you are going to see this again in calculus 2. Yeah. Not a lot of people like this because it's pretty long. 